everyone, Caroline here with another new workout for you guys. So I have been working on this one for about a week and a half or so now, and it's basically a fusion of fitness and yoga. So it's a series of short pose, short, short combinations of poses that, okay. Hi everyone, Caroline here. I have a new workout for you guys today. I've been working on this one for the past week and a half or so to kind of get it right for you guys. Um, it's basically a combination of fitness and yoga. So it's designed to build your smoothness and transition and trans transitional strength within your practice, as well as work your endurance and cardio. So it will get your heart rate up, you'll get a sweat going. Um, it involves kind of short combinations of different yoga poses that are designed to be repeated for a certain number of times so that you can build your strength and, like I said, endurance and cardio as well. Um, this practice is not a beginner level practice. However, I will be showing modifications you can take. There's a lot of work in arm balances in this particular workout, but it's just your crow pose and then an L sit as well as side crow. So if you're at least familiar with those postures, that'll be really, really helpful within this class. Um, if you don't like arm balances, I'll always give modifications to still bear weight on your arms, but not always go all the way. So with this class, I will be talking you through the exercise first, demonstrating the combination. I'll tell you how many reps you're going to do of it, and then we'll speed through me doing it so that you can then learn the next combination. So I encourage you in between each exercise, when I'm done explaining it and say how many reps to do, do it on your own time. That way you can move with your body at your pace. Um, so before we go ahead and get started, as always, I really appreciate all of the donations that have been coming in at paypal.me slash carolinefitness. Um, I'm really glad you guys have been enjoying these classes so far, and I will keep them going as long as we are stuck inside doing this. So with that being said, I'm going to guide you through a quick warm-up, and then we will jump into the full workout. Let's jump right into our downward dog to start. So tuck your toes, send your hips high, find a down dog for a moment. This warm up is just to get your body moving, get your muscles activated before we really start working into the full workout. So pedal out your feet, bend one knee at a time, whatever feels good. Just check in with how your ankles are doing, how your calves are doing. Sink both heels down to the mat for a minute. Press your belly and rib cage closer to the thighs. Press your palms and all 10 fingers into that mat. So really activate everything in the arms, including the triceps. Pull your belly button in and up towards the rib cage, engaging those abdominal muscles. And then from here, inhale, reach your right leg high. Just find a three-legged dog. Open the hips, bend the knee. Circle the ankle, circle the knee. Enjoy this moment here, stretching out through the hip. Feeling that nice opening in the front of the body. Straighten out that leg, square off your hips, and then let it come back down to the floor. We'll do that to the other side. So inhale, lift your left leg high, open the hips, bend the knee, circle the ankle, whatever feels good. Straighten out that leg, square off the hips, and let your foot come back down. Just tiptoe your feet to the top of your mat here. We'll take a couple rounds of sun A and sun B, and then we'll jump right in. So inhale, find a halfway lift once you've walked to the top. Then exhale, fold forward again. Inhale, reach your arms all the way up to the sky. Let your gaze follow. And exhale, hands come to heart center. Let's take three full rounds of Surya Namaskar A, that sun A. Inhale, reach your arms high. Exhale, hinge forward from the hips, forward fold. Inhale, find a halfway lift. Exhale, plant your palms, step back into a high plank. Pause here for a second, this high plank. Shift forward and back for a moment. So notice how this feels in your wrists. If your wrists are feeling a little more tender today, make sure you take it easy on the arm balances. Take about two more rounds of rocks. On your last one, inhale, shift it forward. Exhale, bend the elbows, find your chaturanga. This will be important to know, so make sure your elbows are hugged in. You have a long line from heels to crown of the head. Inhale, pull your chest through, come to the tops of your feet, upward facing dog. And exhale, send your hips high, downward facing dog. Pedal out those feet for a second. Heels lower down, bring your gaze forward, step or hop to the top of your mat. This may start to feel that weight bearing in the arms. 
Inhale, find your halfway lift, lengthen. And exhale, fold it forward. Inhale, reach your arms all the way up to the sky, gaze follows. Exhale, hands come to heart center. Let's take two more rounds of that sun A. Inhale, reach it high. Exhale, hinge forward from the hips, forward fold. Inhale, find that halfway lift, lengthen. Exhale, plant the palms, step it back into that chaturanga, lower all the way to that 90 degree bend in the arms. Inhale, pull your chest through, come to the tops of your feet, upward dog. Then exhale, send your hips high, downward dog. Bringing it forward, gaze to the top of the mat, hop, step, jump all the way up. Inhale, halfway lift, lengthen. And exhale, forward fold. Inhale, reach those arms all the way up to the sky. And exhale, hands come to heart center. One more time, inhale, reach it up. Exhale, hinge forward from the hips, fold it forward. Inhale, halfway lift, lengthen. Exhale, plant the palms, move through that chaturanga, upward and downward dog. From that down dog, bring your gaze forward, travel it to the top of your mat, hop, step, jump. Inhale, find a halfway lift, lengthen. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, chair pose, find a deep bend in those legs, arms reach high. We're coming here a lot today, so make sure your weight's to the heels, your knees point right over those toes. Take an inhale here. Exhale, reach the arms back, half chair. Inhale, traditional chair, arms reach high. Exhale, body comes low, reach the arms back. Two more times, inhale, reach it up. Exhale, reach it back. Inhale, reach it up. Exhale, reach it back. Inhale, reach it up. Exhale, fold it forward. From here, inhale, find your halfway lift, lengthen. Exhale, step your left leg back, just finding a warrior one for a moment. Spiral that heel down, bend your front leg, and inhale, reach the arms up. Find a little pulse into that front leg. So here we're just starting to activate this lunge position. This is gonna be another important one within this workout. So just those little shifts forward and back. Keep pressing your left pinky toe into the floor. Two more right here. Find stillness in that warrior one. Inhale, reach your arms high. Exhale, plant the palms. Step your left foot forward to meet the right. Inhale, find a halfway lift, lengthen. Exhale, right foot steps back, lunging into that warrior one again. So bend your left leg, right heel spirals down. Reach your arms up. Establish that warrior one first, then start to find that same little pulse. Controlling it here, we're not bouncing, we're using the muscles. Take about five more. Four, three, two, one. Find stillness, inhale, open through the chest. And exhale, plant the palms, step that right foot forward. Take a couple bends of those knees. Whatever you need here, maybe shake the head yes and no. Then gently roll up through the spine. Take a big shoulder roll up and back. Grab some water towel off, whatever you need. We're gonna jump right into our workout. So first thing, we're going to start with a little down dog crunch series into a warrior one and two combination. Um, we're gonna demonstrate this on the right side first, and then I'll talk you through the left side as well as all of the transitions. So the exercise looks like this. We're starting in our downward dog. Your hips are lifted nice and high. You'll inhale, reach your right leg up. As you exhale, crunch your knee into your nose. You shift to that high plank alignment, knee taps in. From here, you'll inhale, come back to your three-legged dog. Exhale, shift it forward, right knee to right tricep. Notice how the obliques engage. Inhale, shift it forward again. Exhale, cross it over, right knee to left tricep. Inhale, shift it up, and then you repeat. So finding it into the nose. Inhale, reach it up to the right. Inhale, reach it up to the left. Inhale, reach it up. That's your second set. So one set is into the nose, to the right side, and then to the left side. So you're going to do that five times on that first side on the right. Let's go in three, two, one. Take your time, five sets of that knee in center, right, left.
you guys, once you have finished that round of down dog, knee center, right, left, we're going to go into a quick lunge series on that right side. So it's going to look like this. The first half of this exercise, you start from your down dog. You reach your right leg up, step it through between your hands. Your back heel stays lifted. We set up for our crescent lunge. So we lunge nice and deep into that front leg. The combination is crescent here. We bend our back knee, tap it to the floor, hands come to heart center. We inhale, reach it up. Then exhale, warrior two. Checking in that warrior two, you have your capital T in the legs. Back foot is flat on that floor. Then we shift it back forward again. So we go crescent, tap the knee, up, warrior two. Crescent, tap the knee, up, warrior two. So that crescent, knee tap, crescent, warrior two is one full set right there. You are going to do 10 sets of those on the right. After your 10th set, that last crescent, tap the knee, up, warrior two, your transition. You're going to flip that palm, reach it all the way back, cartwheel your hands down, Step your right foot back to down dog, then step your left foot forward. You get to start that on the other side. So you reach your arms up. You go up, tap the knee, up, warrior two. On the left side, 10 times. Final time, you reverse that warrior, cartwheel it down, you end back in that downward dog. So let's give that a go. You have 10 sets on the right and left. Crescent, tap the knee, up, warrior two, in three, two, one. Take your time, pause the video if you need. You guys, once you finish that first lunge series, here is the added on version. So the beginning is the exact same, but we're switching off right and left each time. Total is going to be four full sets. One set is going to the right and left. So step that right foot forward, find your crescent lunge here. The combination is reach it up, tap the knee, up, warrior two, reverse, cartwheel. Now this is just like we did. Step it back to down dog then left foot forward, same thing left, up, tap the knee, up, warrior two, reverse, cartwheel it down, step it back, right foot forward. Now that's one full set. You're going to do that four full times, so that's right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Get ready, here it comes in three, two, one, Pause the video if you need to. We'll all meet back up on the other side. Okay, everyone, I hope you're feeling a little more warm after doing all of it. The good news is we get to start it all over again from that left side. So a quick talk through again of what you're doing. You're taking five sets of that three-legged dog crunch center, this time left, then right. So that's this one, reach it up. You crunch knee to the nose, reach it up. Left knee, left tricep, reach it up. Left knee, right tricep, and up. That's one set. You're going to do five full sets of those. From there, you'll step your foot forward left side 10 times. So that first one is the simple version. So it goes crescent, tap the knee, up, warrior two, 10 of these, that's one set. So second set, tap the knee, up, warrior two. 10 of those. Once you finish that 10th set, you're going to reverse that warrior, take your cartwheel transition, step the left leg back, right foot forward. You'll reach it up. You do 10 simple sets. So that's the tap the knee, up, warrior two. 10 consecutive on that side. So 10 left, 10 right. Then you go into the complicated version. So that's alternating right and left with your cartwheel transition in between four full sets of right and left. So talking that through again, we go five full sets of knee center left, right from three-legged dog. You do 10 sets right, then left of your simple crescent tap the knee, warrior two. 
Then you do your full transition, four full sets, alternating sides. Here it comes in three, two, one, pause that. Now that you've finished up that first series, we're going to move into our next exercise. Utilizing that three-legged dog again with our fallen triangle, some handstand hops, then some dragonfly lunges and planks. So I'm going to talk you through everything we're going to do on the first side. Once we learn that, you're going to go through that on your own time and then repeat the exact same thing on the other side. So it's going to feel really familiar by the time you're done. So this first exercise, we are going to do five full times. You'll start in your downward dog. You're going to reach that right leg up in your three-legged dog. From here, we bring that leg underneath us, coming to our fallen triangle. Now, options. You can either put that foot on the floor, or for extra challenge, you can hover it off the ground. From here, you come back to your three-legged dog, lift the leg high, then step that foot through between your hands into your lunge. From here, plant those palms strong. We go into two handstand hops, landing in your Shiva squat each time. Second one, you land in your lunge. So that way you can set that right foot back again and start over. So it's that fallen triangle, three-legged dog, step it through, handstand hop, Shiva, handstand hop, lunge. That's your transition. You're going to do five full sets of those. Once you finish that fifth set, end in your lunge position. We're going into a dragonfly twist. Now this will alternate sides. You're going to do four full sets. One set is going to the right and left. The combination is from your low lunge. You reach your right fingertips high, finding that simple twist. You lower the hips down, come to the outsides of your feet. This is your horizon lunge. You lift the hips up, right fingertips high. You shift to a side plank. You hold this side plank for two full beats, whatever that means to you. Then you come to a high plank, both hands down. Then you step your left foot forward, low lunge. Then we do that on the other side. You reach the left fingertips high, twist. Lower the hips, come to the outsides of the feet. Lift it up, fingertips high. Step to your side plank. You can always stagger the feet here, that's an option. You hold it for two beats. You come to the middle for two beats. That's one set, right, left. Then you step your right foot forward again. You do that three more times. So, to repeat, you start with that fallen triangle combination. So three-legged dog, swing it through the fallen triangle, reach it back up, step it through, two handstand hops, the second one lands in your lunge so you can repeat. Do that five times. Then you go into that second combination of the twisted lunge, lower the hips, lift it up, side plank, high plank, switch sides. Four sets, one set is to the right and left. From there, when you finish that, you get to start it all from the left side. So the left side of the first combination looks like this. The leg reaches high, bring it through, lift it up, step it through, handstand hop, Shiva, handstand hop, lunge. You repeat. Then you do your full second set of the lunges, side planks, and high planks. Here it goes in three, two, one, pause that.
thing we're doing is flat back skandasanas to the right and left. So you'll bring your arms out to a capital T shape or to your hips, whatever feels best for you right now. Shift that weight to one side. Your both sets of feet are flat on the floor, toes are pointed straight forward, your spine is long, so think your back is parallel to the floor. Keeping that spine where it is, flat back, you're going to shift to the other side. So it's nice and simple. You're going to do 10 full sets. One set is going to the first side, then second side. So one set is here, then here. Take 10 full sets. Here's another simple exercise to take once you finish those skandasanas. We're taking a goddess pose to a star jump, we land, and we lift the heels. Bring your hands to heart center, heels are in, toes are out, feet are nice and wide, bend those knees. From here, this is your preparation. You reach it up, jump, land, lift both heels down. Jump, land, lift both heels down. You want to keep that tailbone dropped, body stays nice and high, that can be fast or as slow as you want. You're taking 10 full sets. Here it comes. Three, two, one, all yours. Next exercise that we're taking is a balance exercise working into our Garudasana, our eagle pose. Now the rule with eagle, rule of thumb makes it easy to remember. When you cross your legs, whatever leg is on top is the arm that is underneath. This is going to be important once you start moving into this fast. Now my best tip for you moving into eagle quickly is from a lunged position. You shift forward, lift everything up at once, bend and wrap everything up at once. That's going to be your standing balance challenge here. Now in your eagle, you bend nice and deep into that leg. Your thighs can cross, your toes can either be tapped on the floor, floating, or wrapped around that standing leg, so you have options. Arms, remember, whatever leg is on top, arm is on the bottom. You cross those upper arms, wrap it around hand to hand, grab around the shoulders, or if you don't want to open the shoulders today, hands come to heart center. So that's your eagle pose. Here's the combination. One set is going to your first side and second side. You are going to take five full sets. So from your first side, you're going to start in a crescent lunge position. Shift your weight forward, wrap everything into that eagle. Unwrap, step through the lunge, pivot to the other side of your mat, you're ready for the other side. So shift it forward. So if your right leg goes on top, right arm goes underneath. Find your wrap, stand everything up, and step back to the first side. That's one full set, you get five of them. Here we go in three, two, one. Our next exercise is designed to start getting us jumping a little bit more. We're moving through what I'm calling a hip width chair pose and our Shiva squat, but with a little jump in between. So in our hip width chair, hands are going to stay at heart center the whole time. Make sure your feet are aligned right under those hips. Your knees are bent, your weight is slightly back, hands are at heart center, core is strong. Explaining Shiva squat, we stand on one leg. Our back knee is off the floor, it taps the cap, so you have a cross of the inner thighs, Ideally, that foot is hovering. You can always tap those toes for extra balance. So we're going from a hip width chair to a Shiva squat, then back to a hip width, then back to your other Shiva squat, so switching sides. The final step is a jump. So we go down, cross, down, cross. That's one set. So going once each side, you're doing 10 sets. Here it comes in three, two, one. Now that we have that Shiva squat really in our body, we're going to work the most challenging standing balance combo of this workout. So I'm calling this our one-legged Tadasana or just standing. This combination stays on one leg the entire time, so you never have to worry about putting it down. We're going over a few things. This is our standing Tadasana, our Shiva squat. Warrior three is going to be key here. Now warrior three, we find a capital T shape in the body, long line from heel to the crown of the head, 
Make sure that that back is parallel to the floor. The final position we're going to be hitting is our standing split. Now with standing split, the head drops low. Imagine you could touch your forehead to your shin. The hips are square, so we don't open the hips. We keep them in. The hands in a perfect world frame that foot. They can always be a little forward. You can always bend your knees a little. This is all for standing leg strength. So those are the different positions we're going to be moving through here. It starts like this. We start in our standing mountain Tadasana. You bend into your Shiva squat, knee comes to tap the calf. You extend into your warrior three. You come back to Shiva squat. So there's always a Shiva and a Tadasana in between. You stand back up to your Tadasana. You come to your Shiva. Then you drop into your standing split. Hands come down, drop the head, leg goes high. Then come back to your Shiva. That is one full set. You are going to do five sets on the first side, five sets on the second side. So again, a little faster, it looks like this. Standing Tadasana, Shiva. Warrior three, Shiva. Standing Tadasana, Shiva. Standing split, Shiva. That's one full set. Five on the first side, five on the second side. Here it comes, three, two, one. Our next exercise is a really simple one. We're taking our half chair, our Ardha Utkatasana. So you'll bring the feet together. So this is a feet closed chair pose. You're going to sit into that chair, then bring your body low, reach the arms back. Make sure you're not sitting on the thighs, you have length. From here, squeeze the legs together. You're just going to lift those heels and lower them down. That's one set. So a lift, a lower. You keep everything strong. You do not change the level of your body. 20 sets, here it comes in three, to lift the heels. As you finish those heel raises in your chair pose, take a seat all the way to the floor. Now here, we're moving into our L-sits. This is a lot of low ab work. If you find that you can't get the legs off the floor in this next position, you can place two blocks underneath your hands and it'll bump your hips up a little bit more. So the combination looks like this. Your feet will be flat on the floor. Your hands will come slightly behind you, fingertips pointing forward. We will come to our reverse tabletop first. So you're going to lift those hips up. The head can stay neutral here. You don't need to drop it back. From here, you shoot your hips back between your hands. Extend just the right leg. The left leg will stay slightly bent. From here, you plant the right foot. Send the hips up, reverse tabletop. Now shoot the hips back up, opposite foot lifts. From here, we do both feet. So send the hips up, reverse tabletop. Shift it back, both feet hover. Send the hips up, reverse tabletop. Shift the hips back, both feet lift. That's one full set. So it goes reverse tabletop, right leg up, reverse tabletop, left leg up, reverse tabletop, both legs up, twice. You are going to take, how many sets? I think it's five, it's torture. Four full sets. You guys got lucky. Four full sets of that tabletop right, left, both twice. Here it comes. Three, two, one, go.
The next exercise is where we're going to start getting into some arm balances here. So if Vakasana, Crow Pose, is brand new today, I encourage you to take this back a notch. Don't lift your feet off the floor. You're just going to shift the weight to the hands. So I'll show you what I'm talking about in a second. So this section, we start with our feet together. Hands come to heart center. This is our closed foot chair pose. We take a jump to hip width distance or a little wider. Feet are still parallel. From here, hands plant a foot in front of the feet. You shift your weight forward, knees to the triceps. Float just your right toes off the floor. Plant your foot back down. Stand up. Jump the feet together. Now we do the other side. Jump the feet wide. Hands down, shift forward. Hover the left toes. Down, jump together. Then we do both toes, so our full Vipassana. So jump it out, hands down. Hover, lift both toes. Down, close. One more time. So same pattern as our L sits. You lift the right foot, then left foot, then both feet. Now, if you are new to curl pose and you need to modify, your feet will stay on the floor. You'll just practice shifting your weight forward and then come back. So you'll never hover the toes off the floor. So I'll show you a little bit faster what this combo will look like. You are going to do how many sets here? Five. You get five full sets. One set is right foot, left foot, both feet twice. So again, it starts here. We jump out, right foot, down, jump in, out, left foot, down, jump in, out, both feet, down, jump in, out, both feet down, that's one. You have five of them in three, two, one. Let's give those arms a break with a quick standing balance exercise. We'll be working on our half moon here. Two different combinations. The first exercise we will do 10 times. Second one we will do four times. So I'll break down both of them. First exercise, we'll start with a triangle base. So right toes will point forward, left toes will point the side of the mat. You'll tip yourself forward and shift into your half moon. So bend your right leg, shift your weight up, lift your back leg off the mat. So our left side stacks over right. You can always place a block underneath your right hand. From here, left fingertips stay reaching high. We bend the right leg, tap the left toe. It's like a little tick-tock. Then lift it back up, tip the body forward. That's one. So you tap and lift. So the tap comes from that gentle bend of the front leg to let your whole body tip back. Do that 10 times on the first side. From that 10th time, you'll end in your half moon. You'll take a Shiva squat to place both fingertips on the floor. You'll go into your revolved half moon. So opposite hand as foot stays down. You straighten everything and reach your right fingertips high. Straighten that leg. From here, you come back to your Shiva squat. Open the hips. Find that half moon. That's one set. You do four of these. So again, one set is Shiva. Revolved half moon, Shiva, half moon. So you do 10 sets of just your half moon TikTok, four sets of Shiva to revolved, Shiva to half moon. Do that all on the right, then do it all on the left. Here it comes. Three, two, one. Next exercise, if you are not familiar with side crow, this is another one where you don't have to lift your, lift your feet off the floor if you don't want to. I'll demonstrate two different variations of side crow. One is a little more supported with the arms, or if you're feeling like challenging yourself, you can go with the one arm side crow. So whichever one works best for you today. We will start in our chair pose. So you're going to come into your chair, 
Hands come to heart center. Left elbow comes to the outside of the right knee. You find a twist. Now, planting the hands down directly to the side of your body. Bend those legs a lot. Both elbows latch underneath that right thigh, hip and knee. You shift your weight to your hands, hover your feet, then come back to your chair. Then you go to the other side. So hands come to your heart center. Right elbow to left knee, really hook it. Elbows to the knee and hip, shift it forward, lift your feet, come back to the middle. So that's one full set. You are going to do five full sets. If that's too much for you and your arms start to fatigue, you can cut back on the number of sets you do. Four is perfect, three is perfect, whatever you need. I will show the slightly more challenging side crow if you want to try that today. So I'll show it from the side. So you will take your chair pose. Your hands will come to heart center and revolve. Instead of placing them to the side, you're going to place them slightly forward. All your weight goes on that left arm with your legs, right arm supports. You hover the feet, you come back to center. So to the other side, you revolve, elbow to knee, both hands down but legs only on the right arm. Hover, come back to center. So that's one full set of that. You have anywhere from three to five sets in three, two, one. This next exercise is my favorite one of this entire series. We are taking what's called the belly down chair, sliding into our chaturanga, a locust variation, and then moving back into the belly down chair. This one is all about the power in the legs and the control in the arms. The more you can push with those legs, the way easier it's gonna be. I want you to think about staying level the entire time you shoot forward here. It'll all make sense in a second. So, to set up and discover what that belly down chair is for you, you're going to find a high plank. Then press the hips back. Shins are parallel to the floor, arms are slightly forward of you. You look past those fingertips. This is your belly down chair, it's our home base. From here, you press with those legs, you shoot your hips forward straight into that chaturanga. Hug the elbows in. From here, you lower to your belly, keep the elbows hugging in. Toes untuck, hands stay down, you lift your chest and legs off the mat for a locust variation, engage the glutes, engage the hamstrings, release it down, tuck your toes, press through a tabletop position, right back into your chair. So a little faster, we shoot it forward, lower it down, locus lift, down, tuck to chair. That's one set. You get 10 of them. So take your time, make sure you control it, keep your core strong the entire time. Here come your 10 sets, belly down chair to chaturanga, belly locus, press through all fours, back to your chair. Here it comes in three, two, one. All right, everyone, we only have two more exercises left of this entire series. The next one, we're targeting our shoulders and abs a little bit more. Final one is full body. So this one, we're moving through dolphin pose and forearm plank. The one thing I really want you to focus on in your dolphin and your forearm plank is we never sink into the shoulders. You're always pressing the floor away from you and lifting up and out of the shoulders. Core is always strong. So we'll come to our forearm plank. In this one, arms are parallel to each other. So number 11 shape in the arms no gripping the fingers together. So number 11, palms face down. Find your forearm plank first. So long line from heels to the crown of the head. From here, start to tiptoe your feet up, lift the hips. Dolphin, for extra challenge, you come up to those tippy toes. We hold it here for four, three, two, one. Tiptoe the feet back, forearm plank. You hold it here for four, three, two, one. That is one set, so that tiptoe up to your dolphin pose where the hips are lifted, you're on the tips of your toes, pressing the floor away from you, hold it there for four, you come back into your forearm plank, you hold it there for four, 
you are doing five full sets of these. So five sets of dolphin to forearm plank. Here it comes in three, two, one. We are at our final exercise of this entire series. This I'm calling a yoga burpee. It's about as big of a burpee as you could get while still keeping it within that realm. So um, I'm going to show the full version of it first. It's really challenging, especially if you're not used to shooting back from your crow pose to your chaturanga. So if that's not familiar to you, hold up. I will show you the second more modified version that should be more accessible. So you will start at the top of your mat, but a little bit back so you have space to move. Feet can be about hip width distance. I actually suggest that for getting into your crow. You're going to jump up, land, plant your hands, shift right into your crow pose. From here, shoot your feet back, land in your chaturanga. You'll come to your up dog, and then your down dog like a vinyasa. You'll bring your gaze forward, bend those knees, jump it all the way to the top, right into your jump again. Into that crow pose. Shoot it back, upward dog, downward dog, look forward, bend those knees, jump it forward. So one set is your jump, crow, shoot back to chaturanga, up, downward dog. You're going to do 10 of these total, five is totally an option too. Let me show you the modified version as well. So modified version, you can always take out the jump, so you can lift the heels down, Crow pose, maybe you just shift your weight forward. Maybe you can find your crow, but you don't shoot back. From there, you can put the feet back down, step back into a plank and lower chaturanga. You'll move through your up and down dog. If jumping forward is not something you like, bring your gaze forward, just step your feet to the top of the mat, then come into your jump or heel raise. So whatever version you choose to do, 10 sets is the goal. If you need to do less, it's all good. We'll get going in three, Two, final push. All right, you made it through everyone, so I hope you're feeling really good after that workout. I encourage you to take some deep stretches after this just to release everything particularly targeting the delts and shoulders, so either pulling the arm across the body, stretching into the triceps a little, whatever feels good, maybe taking a couple lunges, some supine twists, whatever you feel your body needs, but please make sure you cool down. If you feel like you still want more, you can repeat this whole series. You can pick and choose bits and pieces from it that you can repeat as well. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please let me know if you have any suggestions. I'm excited about this new format, and I'm going to try to create a few more classes just like this one. So as always, if you appreciated and enjoyed this video, feel free to donate at paypal.me slash carolinefitness. Other than that, I will be back soon with more classes. Follow me on Instagram at spin.vin, V-I-N, dot yin, Y-I-N. Have a great night, everyone.